This is the ultimate easy homemade comfort meal, and it's super simple to make. Today, I'll walk you through how to create crispy Japanese fried chicken paired with a creamy potato salad. First, we're going to start with the chicken marinade to give it plenty of time to soak up all the flavors while we work on the rest of the dish. I'll be slicing the chicken thighs into roughly two inch pieces, making sure they're all about the same size to ensure they fry evenly and to get that perfect crisp. For the marinade, I like to pour everything directly into the bowl while weighing it on the scale. This way, I get precise measurements in grams and save myself from washing extra measuring spoons. Once all the marinade ingredients are in, I'll mix everything by hand, cover the bowl, and set it aside so the flavors can develop while we move on to the next ingredient, the potatoes. Now, it's time to make the Japanese potato salad. After rinsing the potatoes, I'll peel them and cut each one into quarters. Next, I'll transfer the potatoes into a pot and add enough water to fully submerge them. And of course, can't forget to generously salt the water. I'll bring the pot to a boil on the stovetop for about 10 minutes, giving us time to move on to the next ingredient, the cucumbers. I'll be using a mandolin to slice the cucumbers evenly, opting for a wavy blade to add a decorative touch to the dish. After slicing, I'll wrap the cucumbers in paper towels and press them gently to remove any excess moisture. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of cucumbers due to the mild flavor, but adding a bit of salt really enhances it for me. I was initially hesitant to include them, but now I'm confident they'll complement the other ingredients perfectly. Plus, they add a nice crunch to the dish, which I'm excited to try. Next up is the sauce and it couldn't be easier. It only needs three ingredients, QP mayo, hot mustard, and rice wine vinegar. Once it's mixed, I'll set it aside for later while I move on to preparing the next ingredient, the carrots. Got the Looney Tunes carrots. Look at this. And for some reason, my cat has decided this carrot top is the perfect place to sit. I've never really seen her want to sit on food before, but maybe she just likes the feel of it. After I cut the top off, I placed it near her, and sure enough, she sat on it again. As for the carrots, I'm going to slice them into small pieces, and I'll do the same with the red onion. The potatoes are done, so I'll strain them and let them sit for a bit while I slice the final ingredient for this potato salad, the scallion whites. Since I don't need the potatoes to be fully mashed, I'll use a fork to mash them very lightly, leaving some chunks for extra texture. Here comes the fun part, mixing everything together. I gotta dry this out first. There's no specific order for adding the ingredients, so I'm just going to toss them in all at once. Once the sauce goes in, it's time to mix everything up. Just like that, our Japanese potato salad is ready. It's marinated. Now, let's get back to the chicken. After it's finished marinating, I'll coat each piece with all-purpose flour and cornstarch. With just a couple of simple ingredients, this step shouldn't take too long. While I'm dredging the chicken, I'll also start heating up the oil to the perfect frying temperature. Ideally, you want to deep fry the chicken twice, First at 325 degrees, then again at 350 degrees for that extra crisp. But full disclosure, I skipped the second fry and went straight to 350 degrees for the first fry because I was just too hungry to wait. Pro tip, never cook when you're starving. 
Another pro tip, maybe snack on something when you're cooking. I'm not gonna lie, I've been having a lot of bites of that Japanese potato salad. This is actually the only thing that I was scared of making this dish, but it turned out really well and it tastes good. A lot of the ingredients look good all together, but the only thing is that the onion seems a bit too thick. Next time I will definitely slice it thinner. But other than that, I'm satisfied with it. Once the chicken pieces turn golden brown, I'll take them out of the oil and place it on a wire rack. While it's still hot and has a bit of moisture, I'll sprinkle it with salt right away for that extra flavor. I couldn't help myself. I had to sneak a piece while waiting. This is the neatest I've ever packed something in a Ziploc bag. Oh well. We got the Japanese potato salad. We got the fried chicken. Now it's the last, now it's time for the last step. While the fried chicken rests for a bit, it's time to prepare the final ingredient, the cabbage. I'll remove the outer leaves and stack the layers. Here are the stems. Okay, now we can roll it. Then, I'll use the chiffon knot technique to roll them up and slice it into thin strips. It's a very satisfying method, and I love how easy it is to do. And there it is. All right. All right. All right. All right. And all right. Some of this. Then. Here it is, our complete Japanese meal. Crispy Japanese fried chicken, creamy potato salad, and a fresh crisp cabbage salad. It's the perfect combination of flavors and textures. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Also, don't forget to add more QP mayo on the side. Shout out to my buddy Luke for giving me this idea of making karage, or Japanese fried chicken. Here we go. That is it for me in today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video, where we celebrate 1,000 subscribers by using 1,000 red beans to make mochi red bean. See you all in the next one.